Guys, what's going on? I'm going to answer uh, some questions here from All Out Athletics. Ash Norman sent me these questions, um, and I like to get these up on video so you guys could see because uh, sometimes people just can't keep up with all the podcasts um, that are being done. So this is a great way for me to centralize stuff. So we got some training questions, some business questions, some question questions on the fitness industry, um, and let's see what else we got. Squat questions, strength questions, business questions, educational questions, 10 questions. See if I could get this done in 10 minutes. So, Ash, first of all, I appreciate the way um, he asked. A lot of um, generous, kind words. He says, hey, Zach. He says, thank you. Kind regards. You know how many emails I get that just say hi? You could tell it's a straight up cut and paste. And then they say regards. They don't even type their own name in or they say thank you. They just let their signature do the talking, which these little details, they're huge. Um, I know it's an extreme example, but you always hear like the military special forces saying that, you know, the soldier that does not pay attention to detail will get people killed. And I feel like a lot of people don't care about little details that make big differences. Um, in any area of your life. It doesn't have to be you're getting killed. So let's, uh, let's check it out, guys. Ash says, first, it's an absolute honor to have you featured on a Q&A with us. I've been a big fan for a long time. For those who don't know who you are, could you give us some information about yourself? Um, age 41, I live in New Jersey. I've been training since age 13 and a half, 1989. Um, married, two kids. I run three gyms. I run an online business, multiple aspects. Um, I do consulting for strength coaches, for strength and conditioning, for strength athletes. I do consulting for uh, gym owners, primarily people that are into the um, athlete strength and conditioning type uh, business. And also I am the strength coach for the Rutgers University wrestling team. So um, I'm lazy. <laughs> Got a lot going on. It says, uh, you coach a lot of wrestling athletes. It's clear to everyone how intense their lifestyle is. When being approached by a new athlete, what qualities do you look for in that person? Do you give them a trial period to see if they're the right person for your gym? Um, or is it a continuous trial period? So all athletes go through a initial trial workout. Um, and it's really not just a trial for the kid. It's also a trial for the parents. Did the parents read the website from top to bottom? Did they invest time? Uh, to find out what we're about. Um, how does this kid move? Um, is he strong physically? Is he strong mentally? Does he break down? Does he have mobility issues? And we tend to see a lot of common traits. You know, a lot of our um, kids that are kind of local to this area, they tend to lack confidence. They're not very strong. A lot of those middle school kids are carrying a lot of uh, bot, you know, like baby body fat. They haven't put any muscle on them. They're not very athletic. So we're doing um, a lot of basic, basic stuff to get them moving. We're doing a lot of nutrition, you know, education guidelines to basically change their lifestyle. So uh, the and then the trial is ongoing because sometimes kids start off great and the parents start off great, and then as time goes on, the kid starts canceling workouts, starts showing up less. You know, this that I'm training at school, or you know, they just they they get tired of working hard. And uh, w not everybody's cut out for what we do because it's this consistency. You know, I equate it to like looking at the powerlifters I've known for a long time, like Mark Bell. We've known each other since we were on the Q&A of Elite FTS. That's 10 plus years ago. He's still lifting heavy. He's still chasing goals. Um, and that brings me to, I remember guys that were working out when I was younger and then five years later, I'd run into them. They don't work out anymore because, oh, I'm married. I have kids. Now I'm going to be weak. You know, they lose it. So uh, there is staying power that I look for. Um, next question is, we now live in a world where there's always a next best thing. Gimmicks that pop up, stuff that's reshaping the fitness industry. So it's safe to say that this industry can be very confusing, especially for a newcomer. Is there any spe anything specific that you believe all strength ath athletes should be doing as part of their training? You should squat. You should uh, deadlift. You should pick things up and carry. You should jump. You should be able to do body weight, pushing and pulling exercises, pull-ups, dips, push-ups, rope climbing. 
You should be able to do lunges. You should be able to perform a deep squat with a flat back, with a stable trunk. Now, you may not be there, but you we should be able to build you up to those things. So basics, you know, I've written many articles about it on the Zach Evans blog. It's like basics for the win. I always talk about that. Uh, I remember listening to Joe DeFranco's podcast <clears throat> where he discussed releasing his NFL, NFL Combine VHS tape. What I found interesting was he said the only thing he's changed is the starting position of the 40-yard dash. With this in mind, as you develop as a coach, do you feel that you've changed much of your approach to coaching and training? You know, I've certainly gotten smarter. I've gotten better. And the evolution of training evolves according to the way these kids have evolved. More and more kids are showing up weaker, slower, mentally weaker, more body fat, less athletic than ever before. So I'm doing a lot more remedial stuff with those kids. I'm doing a lot more nutritional education with those kids, a lot more lifestyle education about doing the work, about showing up, things that I just didn't have to discuss back in the day. You know, Joe has worked with a lot of those kind of NFL guys. That's not really my forte. My forte is a lot of these kids who have a uh, strong desire and a great work ethic but they're just, you know, good or they're average, but they have the desire. And then they come to me to take them from average to good, from good to great. And I take a lot of pride in doing that. Uh, if you had to pick three key movements in your life that you are, three key moments, not movements, in your life that you're most proud of, what would they be? One of the key moments for me was witnessing our deadlift bar being used by the public for the first time. That moment really sticks into my mind. Cool, man. So for me, key moments, um, obviously both of my kids um, being married, that's a key moment. And man, another key moment. You know, sometimes I don't give myself the credit and people remind me about what an influence I've had on the strength and conditioning industry. So <clears throat> I think from going from the garage to opening the first warehouse gym, it changed the lives of people. People wanted to open up gyms seeing what I was doing, which is crazy. It's just crazy that I, you know, I started putting up these YouTube videos. I started the underground strength show and, um, you know, I feel like maybe it was the wrong time. Like I wish I was 30 years old now and I kind of had that time. I was doing it maybe before people were ready for that kind of stuff, you know? Now they're ready for it. Um, now they are ready. So now I'm looking for somebody to help me take what we do and put it out into the world. Somebody who's willing to document our filming. Okay, next question. The fitness industry is constantly changing. I think one of the biggest changes is through the introduction of CrossFit. I know it's been around for years, but it's become much more mainstream. If I remember correctly, your gym has been CrossFit certified for over five years. Now there's a stigma around the sport. I was wondering what your thoughts about the whole hatred towards it. Um, I was going to uh, become an affiliate of CrossFit, guys, way back in the day. I used to be on the CrossFit forums. And what uh, pulled me in was all these people building gyms in their garages and backyards, doing stuff that I love doing, sandbag training, different kind of barbells, um, mountain biking, running. It, it was true. Like I felt like it was true CrossFit. I saw people setting up like gyms in their backyards if they lived out West. And to me, I loved that training. It was before I owned a gym and I was going to be an affiliate. And I was like, man, I can't be an affiliate. I'm running my gym out of my house. That's illegal. So I finally go and get my CrossFit affiliate. Um, I think I did this in... I can't remember if it was 2007 or 2008. And I do my CrossFit um, affiliate in Quantico on the military base. It was amazing. You know, Greg Glassman was there. Tony Budding was not only recording, but like in between recording, he's teaching you how to do the snatch. <laughs> it was just early days. It was amazing. You know, Ava Twardokins. I mean, these are names that people don't really know. Um, Jeff Martone was there doing kettlebells at the end on a Sunday. Buddy, Mo Buddy Lee... <laughs> the jump rope guy was there. I mean, those were great times. And um, as the years went on, I lost touch with, you know, 
5,000 and 20,000 square foot gyms, gyms that just had barbells and rings. I just, I didn't connect with it. Um, and then, of course, some of my uh, closest friends or people that educated and inspired me the most were great coaches and they were part of the CrossFit community, but that was a, a small number of people. And then I'd see a lot of crap, just like you see a lot of crap in any strength training. I mean, you see idiots everywhere. Um, so it's not just a CrossFit thing. It's a fitness thing. There's just crap. And um, I didn't want to be associated with that. And I think people are just so close-minded that if they saw my gym with tires, they were like, oh, so you do like CrossFit stuff? But it's like, what is CrossFit? Every gym is different. And I'm just not a, a guy that feels good following a crowd of people. Um, and it just wasn't for me. It just was not something I felt like I fitted into. And I was going to de-affiliate. I was an affiliate for seven years, maybe eight years. And I was going to de-affiliate earlier. And I had told Dave Castro, I said, look, like I just basically feel like, um, like an outcast. I mean, I'm training athletes. I don't follow CrossFit. I'm training high school kids only, middle school kids. Everybody else is training, you know, adults. I don't do the short shorts and the socks and the community. I'm just a straight up coach. I go, I, I feel like a fraud being in your community. And it's probably best I step down. And he said, listen, being part of this community doesn't necessarily mean you have to be doing everything that we do. But you contribute to this community through uh, your efforts, through your you know education that you put out there. Um, and he, he mentioned Louis Simmons when Louis was doing those Westside Barbell certifications. And um, I love a lot of the people in there. They're in it for the. I'm pretty sure many of the people are in it for the right reasons. But you know, it's it's just I don't have hatred towards CrossFit. I don't have hate. I don't have room in my heart for hating things or people or places. Um, but I just don't fit in with a crowd. That's more of like an internal thing than a CrossFit thing. That's for sure. Um, what else do we got? Um, if you had to choose one squat variation for athletes, um, which would it be and why? I mean, it would be a back squat. <clears throat> Most people would probably say front squat. Um, but from what I see, it just takes forever with these kids, with their mobility, this and that. I found that we could just get the most bang for a buck. Put that bar on your back and kick some ass and take names and squat low, squat heavy, squat hard. <clears throat> when people were, when you were training people out of your parents' garage, were there any funny stories that happened during this time that stand out to you? Absolutely. Um, I would post up the podcast I did with Barbell Shrugged. I talk about um, <clears throat> thinking I'm going to get arrested. I talk about training kids at a playground. And there's kids off to the other side, you know, smoking cigarettes or at another playground. I see an undercover cop car there. And I was so scared of running my business from my house and local playgrounds. Um, I remember <clears throat> back then there was a forum where you could get kind of mentored by uh, business people. And everybody was like, dude, you cannot run your gym in your garage. Shut that down. Dude, stop everything. Like, cease. Cease. <laughs> And I was like, man, ain't nobody going to stop me. I'm not going to be stopped. So uh, you're saying you remember yourself and two training partners were going to deadlift Farmer Carry Marathon at a local park. People were uh, shouting and swearing at one another. It always makes me laugh. So, yeah, man, I mean, we're doing farmer walks up the street, across the street, training in the backyard with tree logs, climbing rope, you know, slung around a tree. I remember my neighbor, like, telling us, like, we're going to... You're going to hurt your heart. You know, it looked like a, uh, like I was training guys for like the French Foreign Legion or some shit back there. It was just like a, it was awesome. And I'm glad that I did it. And I'm glad I had the guts to do it when all, everybody, everybody, I mean, when I say everybody, I mean like 98.5% was like, don't do it. You can't do it. You don't know what you're doing. And I said, F you, I'm going to make it happen. Um, Next question you got, coming into 2017, you're just, you decided to read or listen to one educational podcast a day to help you. Any books that everybody should read? Um, the one thing was okay. I mentioned that before. Um, Turning Pro, without a doubt. Um, I think Turning Pro is one of the best 
I'm looking at my bookshelf. I'm always looking at my bookshelf. I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Turning Pro and, of course, the Encyclopedia of Underground Strength, undergroundstrengthbook.com. If you haven't read that book, you're missing out, baby. Uh, when you first started training people out of your garage, what pieces of equipment did you have? First started training them out of my parents' garage. I uh, had a squat rack, just an uprights. Had a pair of 50 and 100 pound dumbbells. I had a stability ball. Um, I, I bought a dip and chin bar, put that in the backyard. We had stones in the backyard. Um, I would take towels and put them around the low hanging trees to do pull ups on them. I'm trying to think of some of the other stuff we did. We'd go to the local playgrounds. I made a sandbag. Then when I moved to um, my house, I remember buying kettlebells before I even lived in the house. Kettlebells. Uh, I filled up a keg with water. I made my sandbags. I started getting more dumbbells, medicine balls. Jason Fruge's gym, when he shut it down, I bought a lot of his uh, medicine balls. The 40, the 60 pounders. I got a 45 degree back extension from him. So uh, I put that gym that I had in my house was a like a professional private studio for building badasses. It was pretty damn awesome. So that's it, man. I hope that helped you out, Ash, and uh, All Out Athletics. I like that. Peace out. ZachEvnish.com, UndergroundStrengthCoach.com. And that's it, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.